Hello, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can use UI files created in Qt Designer uh, using PySite 6. So these are the versions of that we are using right now, and I'm in Windows. So let me just close this file here. And uh, for PyQt, we saw that uh, we use UIC. We import UIC from PyQt. But the problem is that PySite does not have that module. So if I just quickly do this, you can see there's an error. Uh, it doesn't exist for PySite. To solve that problem, I created a GIST uh, based on a Stack Overflow uh, link. You can check that link out. Uh, I'll leave it in the description below. And I'll also obviously leave a, a link in the description below for this uh, class. So it's, it's just a little class that can um, load uh, uh, a UI just like PyQt does, but for PySite. And it can also create a file um, that uh, we're going to look at in a second. OK, so you, you want to get this and or just copy the code whatever suits you and here is that code I just I copied it and I placed it there so you can see it's just the uh, same code that was in that guest okay uh, so in the la in the last video if you're following along uh, if not the playlist is on the description below in the the last video we created a UI a very simple thing here uh, an awesome UI with an awesome button and we call this uh, button the object name we called it push button this is important because we're going to access it and it also has um, a signal a signal slot where we click it and the main window closes so and that obviously produced this XML file with all that information we're going to load that XML file using this class and uh, what this class gives us is going to give us uh, the form class and the base class. So setup UI, we're going to have access to that here. And we pass in a window, which is, in this case, the base class. So we're going to set up that window like that. So this will make more sense uh, further on when we convert the file to a PI file and we look at it. So in this way, we can access access the elements. So the form, you can look at the form as a UI, and that's what I'll call it in the next example. So here, I'm basically going into the form. I'm looking for push button with that object name that I just showed you in uh, Qt Designer, and I'm printing out text. So if I run this, there we go. My awesome button, which is the text of this button. If I click on it, it closes the window because that's the action that we chose to give it in Qt Designer. Of course, I could also grab this button and use the connect method that we used uh, on one of the first videos in this series. So that's how you can load the UI into memory. Now let's look at uh, converting the file. Uh, you can see we got Py, PySide UIC. This is a file that is in your Python folder in scripts. And I'm saying that I want to convert this into this, okay? So if I right click here and I open containing folder and here in the containing folder, I write CMD <coughs> just to open the command line and close this for a second. If I make this a bit bigger so we can see and I'll just paste that code in there. And w the reason why I'm coming to this folder is because that's where the file is. And the UI file is. So if I press enter, you can see here, if you look at this side, a new file appeared. Okay, so it created the new file, converted UI to Py. So if I open this file up, let's look at it. So the first thing it's doing, it's uh, just importing a bunch of stuff, to make sure that it, this, uh, this is going to work. And what it did is it converted this UI uh, XML file into this UI Py, and this is what we got. And the main thing we got here is the UI main window and the setup UI. Okay, and then tr retranslate UI is called inside of setup UI. So setup UI is just gonna uh, get everything started for us. Uh, we also have that shortcut that we created. It's somewhere in here, and and that's about it. We got that's how we can convert it using this method using the command line. That class that I showed you the guest from can do the same thing without going into the command line. And that's what we're going to do now. So I'll just uh, close this file up and delete this file. 
We got the same thing. We're importing what we need. We're going to need a queue main window and a queue application. We're importing all the, the stuff that we need for that class to work. And what we're doing now is we're going to convert the file. All right. So I pass in the name of my file here and I call the method 2py. And 2py is just going to create a file with the exact same name but with the extension py. If I wanted a different file going to a different location, I could pass in uh, the name of the file here and I would have to do uh, use the, the PyEnx extension because uh, I'm in the right folder and I just want to do that and let, let's just uh, comment this out first and run this command and see what happens I said run it okay as you can see the Py file is in there we got exactly the same thing okay so it's another way of doing the same thing uh, only this time we're doing it in script think about how you can use that once we have the file we gotta import that file so we can use it because we're not now not putting it into memory we are actually importing it like a module down here uh, all I'm doing is I'm checking if uh, my first UI that module has the attribute UI main window as you can see <coughs> if I open it here UI main window and if in the um, in Qt Designer here, if we said file, new file, and we have created main window, if we created a widget, then instead of UI main window, we would have UI form in here. We'd have this, okay? Just so that you're aware of that. So that's why I did this. I mean, uh, it's just something that you might want to use. Uh, if not, all we need is this. So I'm turning my UI into being this UI main window. I'm creating an application, I'm creating a main window. And now I'll do the setup UI so that that the UI gets set up. And I'm placing the window in here to parent it. So I'm initializing and parenting the UI here. And now down here I can access the existing elements just like I did up above. So if I run this code and I don't need to do this, but you could do this. Uh, in, in actually, you could actually do this in a, in a build or something like that for Sublime. So if I run this code, I'll get my awesome button right there. I'm printing that text, the button text. And if I click, I still got that thing. And it's exactly the same thing as we looked at be before. So that's it for this video. You got it. You know how now how to do this in PySide as well. Um, and we'll see you in the next video.